Hold up. The first flight of a new aircraft type is always a very special moment, quite tense and often emotional. The crowds and the media will only be there to celebrate the maiden flight. However, the team conducting the test program is already looking well beyond this first flight to prepare all the development tests leading up to certification and entry into service. Before the first flight, a thorough review of the aircraft's status is performed. All defects and deviations from definition are recorded. These may be minor manufacturing flaws or anomalies leading to a limitation of the flying domain or the use of some items of equipment. Most of them have no adverse consequences. Some related to safety need to be fixed before flying. Others may impose limitations during flight tests. When it is considered that the airplane is ready, several ground runs are performed. The target is to check the operation of all systems with engines running, including degraded modes. When anomalies are found, they are progressively corrected. Several acceleration stops are performed at increasing speeds up to close to the rotation speed for first flight. Normal and alternate braking modes are tested. The first flight profile depends on the manufacturer's experience and way of doing things. Those without a long development tradition will perform a large circuit, maintaining the landing gear down. Others, like Airbus and Boeing, which have carried out many of these flights, target to open a large part of the flight envelope up to high altitude and high speed. Let's review the typical flight profile for a fly-by-wire Airbus. The first takeoff is performed with a very basic direct flight control law to eliminate the potential risks associated with an incorrect algorithm in the normal law. A first evaluation of the handling characteristics is performed in direct law before engaging the normal law, followed by another assessment. Slats and flaps are retracted for further evaluation. Then the landing gear is retracted. From a technical point of view, this is a critical maneuver. Even if many maneuvers were performed on ground, on jacks, the landing gear may not retract correctly due to small deformations of the fuselage in flight, which prevent one or several locks engaging properly. If the landing gear cannot be locked up, the crew reverts to a Plan B flight with a profile limited to low speeds and system checks. When the landing gear is locked up, several accelerations are performed in direct law and in normal law at various altitudes up to the maximum speed cleared for flutter usually VMO and MMO. At low altitude, in several configurations, decelerations up to an angle of attack just below stall are carried out with an evaluation of the handling characteristics.
The first landing is performed in direct law. Then, a series of six to ten flights is carried out for what could be called the discovery of the aircraft. The target is to quickly identify areas where significant development work may be needed. The aircraft is flown in the entire flight envelope cleared for flutter, at the extreme center of gravity positions in order to evaluate the flight control laws in normal operations and in various failure cases. Fuel consumption in crews is compared to the provisions. All the systems are also checked, including the abnormal functions, such as emergency landing gear extension, alternate braking, emergency electrical system and so on. Usually, this initial evaluation gives a fairly good idea of any potential difficulties for development. The following step is to optimize the various aerodynamics configurations by choosing the best slats and flaps deflections to reduce takeoff and landing distances. At takeoff, they need to be adapted for short rolling distance but also for situations where obstacles very close or far away from the runway will be overflown. All takeoff performances are considered with an engine failure at the critical point. At landing, the target is the reduction of the approach speed, which may be important for some models. The position and the size of the strakes on the engine nacelles may also allow performance to be improved. For the optimization, measurements of rate of climb with one engine out in takeoff configuration, gear up, are performed with the various slats and flaps deflections for comparison. Stall speeds are also measured for these various configurations. Most of the time, the comparison of rates of climb and stall speeds in all possible configurations and the computation of the associated performances allow the best configurations to be chosen. All flights are followed from the telemetry room. After the discovery of the aircraft, followed by the optimization of the aerodynamics configurations, the development of the aircraft and the execution of some of the certification tests can start.